Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. We're going to continue our progress um, using the ocean and the sun as our examples for wave and ray energy. I think this will help us understand uh, treatment a little bit better and, and process a little bit better. So remember from the last video that we have two types of energy in a room. We have pressure and we have reflections. And we have ocean for pressure, and the reflections we can think of as sunshine or ray energy. Pressure and reflections, those are the two variables that I want you to focus on, because that'll help with our understanding. Everything in room acoustics, and I mean everything. Speaker boundary interference effect, room modes, reverberation, rotor frequency. Everything is based upon those two variables, pressure and reflection. So you have to understand those two types of energy. The treatment that we use, and this is going to be about what the treatment sees. So the treatment sees both pressure and reflections. So how it responds to those pressure and reflections is critical. We have a pressure wave, as you can see in this graphic and it oscillates throughout the room. So if we're going to use pressure as one of our variables, we have to have a pressure-based technology. And here's where companies trick people. They play upon the ignorance of the consumer, and that's what I'm trying to get away from for you. I'm trying to educate you on this so you don't get hoodwinked by these companies who say one thing and mean another, or don't know what they're saying and don't know what they're meaning. Hopefully through this series of videos, you'll be able to have an understanding that makes some sense to you without the technical background. So with pressure waves, we have three technologies in our arsenal. We have Hemholtz, Membrane, and Diaphragmatic. Hemholtz. You can study that on your own. You can research those kind of technologies on your own. We don't use Hemholtz only on rare occasions because they're too frequency specific and they don't have enough rate of absorption. They don't have enough horsepower, like a four cylinder engine. You need a lot of them because they only work in certain or specific frequency range and they don't get enough. So you need lots of them. So they're really not a viable full room treatment technology. They're good for tuning. And we've used them for that. But broadband absorption is, is really the technology that you want to use to cover enough surface area. Membrane is the cousin to diaphragmatic. Membrane doesn't have the rate of absorption that diaphragmatic has. So Hemholtz and Membrane have their limitations. But diaphragmatic is the most powerful, and that's the one we use. So we want to make sure that we have a low level that it can go down to, but a very high level of absorption. Because our rooms are small, so we want to get enough energy absorbed per square foot of the treatment. Because we don't have a lot of space to give up. And you can see by our technologies, our ACDA series technology, they take lots of space. 12 inches for the carbon panel and up to 16 inches for the ACDA series. But to get that kind of low frequency level of absorption and get a high rate of absorption at that level, we choose diaphragmatic. Now you can see here in this graphic that our ACDA 12 has a very high rate of absorption. You can see from 30 to 50, the line is very linear, very straight. There's no gaps, there's no spatial irregularities, but nice, clean rate of absorption starting at a very low level. Let's talk about the diaphragmatic absorption process a little bit. Since it's pressure based, remember, pressure and reflections. So, since it's a pressure based technology, we want to look at the graphic here of the ACDA. You can see it has a front wall or double wall in some cases. It has a cabinet, 
and then it has the inside of the cabinet which has our carbon technology now what does carbon do carbon increases the rate the cabinet depth how deep it is it determines the lowest frequency it starts working at so we want to make sure that we have the right depth and we have the right rate because the depth gives us how low it goes and the rate gives us how much it gets. So how low it goes and how much it gets, those are two critical variables. You can see in the ACDA12 graphic, 30 to 50 is very strong. I mean, we get some really good percentages per square foot. 35 at 30, 63 at 40 and 100% at 50. And all rooms have 30 to 50 hertz problems. They also have 30 to 300 hertz problems. Those are your two frequency ranges. The 30 to 50 you have to focus on because they're really big. They can be plus 12, plus 13. I saw one the other day, plus 16 dB over baseline or flat. You're going to have a lot of 30 to 50 cycle energy in the room that needs to be treated. And that's why we, we created the ACDA12 technology. The ACDA10 technology is a little bit more broadband. So it covers that 30 to 300. And then we put our foam on the face, which extends the frequency range up to 6300. So you get a nice broadband absorber that goes from 30 to 6300. And that's the goal. We want to get as much energy absorbed in a widest frequency range as we can. So, and then we can come in with Hemholtz if we have to and tune the frequency ranges that are still problematic. So, let's focus now on I think that gives you an idea about pressure. And if we look at the cabinet of the ACDA series, what do you see? Well, you see an external wall. So you see the energy striking that external wall. When the energy strikes that external wall, it slows down. Now, what happens when it slows down? It then enters the inside of the cabinet. And when it enters the inside of the cabinet, the pressure inside the cabinet is reduced. So the pressure wave that strikes the cabinet is created in an atmosphere of X. When it goes inside the cabinet, it's a pressure range of X minus. It's lower. Okay? We have kind of osmosis, higher uh, concentration to a lower concentration. And that's what you have when you're dealing with a pressure based technology. So you can see how complicated these pressure based technologies are because they're dealing with pressure waves, ocean waves, not sunshine, which is reflection, but ocean waves of energy. So we want to make sure that we understand that pressure and wave energy takes a pressure based technology. Now, when the energy enters the inside of the cabinet, three things happen. It goes through the cabinet, it's reflected back into the room partially, and it's absorbed. So three things go on, and we want to make sure that the absorption is the main variable we look at. So I think that gives you some idea of pressure-based technologies and how they work. You look at the ACDA series, really it's a perforated absorber with our carbon technology, because our carbon technology increases the rate of absorption much better than building insulation, much better than foam, much better than all those technologies that are touted as a pressure-based technology. So we really have a perforated absorber, and you can study those. There's plenty of evidence out there on perforated absorbers. We have a perforated absorber inside a diaphragmatic. Never been done before. And that's how we achieve the rates and levels of absorption that we have with our pressure-based series. Now let's focus on reflected energy. Let's think of sunshine. Think of sunlight. The energy is straighter. 
shorter, doesn't oscillate like pressure waves. We we'll sit on the beach and we watch the ocean waves oscillate as they strike the beach. It's a different form of energy. Reflected energy, we all know what that's responsible for. We get calls every day. People call it echo, it's really reverberation. But nonetheless, echo, reverb, it's all part of reflected energy. We have to deal with a treatment that deals with that kind of energy that's straight, non-oscillating, and shorter wavelength. So what do we use for that? The most economical and easy to produce and predictable and consistent is open cell phone. We took eight years and millions of dollars to create the foam curves that you see here. And the beautiful thing about our foam technology is this predictable and consistent. Molecular velocity, this is the technical term to use for reflected energy or ray energy. It works on airflow. So it's as the energy flows across the surface of the foam, friction is created, and then you get heat, and it's an energy transformation and thus absorption. Remember, energy is not lost, it's just changed. Look at the cell structure of our foam. There's the reason it's so predictable and consistent. And consistent. That's the reason for the red line on the curve compared to Oralex and so on. Why would you treat a 250 hertz problem with a technology that has a 250 hertz problem? Makes no sense. You gotta see through this stuff. You gotta look at what's going on. You can see our cell structure is uniform and consistent. That's what took so long to create. Anybody can do a foam, but to get the curves that we have, that's what took so long to get. But it's the cell structure of our foam that's so critical. You think of a beehive, you know, with the six-sided cells, how they interlock with each other. That's our foam, and that's why we have such a smooth, predictable response. You must have consistent shape and everything in it. Now remember, it works on airflow. So air flows across the surface. People ask us all the time, can we cover it up? No, because it's part of its function. We need the airflow across its surface. We need the ray energy moving across its surface. The most critical reason or region to deal with when you're dealing with ray energy is that 125 to 500 hertz range. Reverb is all about treating that 125 to 500 cycle range. We do a lot of churches in large rooms, and that's the area we have to focus on. And we found that it's, you have to achieve about 75% of that energy. You have to absorb about 75% of that energy to have good results. So we have wave pressure and ray energy, right? Those are the two things that we have to focus on. Wave is pressure, ray is reflected energy. So that's what we have to focus on. So take these two paradigms. And then look in the marketplace and you can answer some questions that are going on in the marketplace. How can a box filled with building insulation stop a pressure wave that's oscillating through the room? How can it? It can't. And if it does, it doesn't do it in a way that's smooth and predictable, which voice and music require. It's a limp mass material type building insulation. Its technical classification is thermal conductivity, heat, not designed for sound absorption. Its usage has been perverted. How can an open celled foam technology stop a pressure wave? It can't. It's not designed to. How can they call it a base trap? Well, they can call it anything they want. But it's not trapping wave energy because it can't. So that's the issue that you have to think about. You have to look at these products that are in the marketplace, and you have to look at the technology inside of them, and then you have to look at the 
problems of physics that you're trying to solve with the technology. And I think this will help you get a better understanding. And then you can decipher through, you know, this madness that's out there. So I hope pressure and reflections, wave and ray energy, I hope this discussion helps you. I hope it arms you with enough evidence to go into the marketplace and really look at the technologies objectively. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple of days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.